So we're going to look at the disjoint set data structure, sometimes called the union fine data structure. And this is a very specific data structure you're not going to see too often because it has a very special use case. This data structure is going to give us a very fast runtime over a certain set of operations dealing with sets that we're going to look at. And so before we even get into those operations, before we even get into what the problem is we're trying to solve, let's just go into what the structure looks like. Essentially, we have an underlying set. Um, so this is the actual data we want to represent. So a set is a series of unique elements. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And under this kind of set of items, there are subsets. So 0, 1, 6, 0, 1, 6 is a subset. It's a subset of the items. We're going to represent each subset with a inverted tree where all of the nodes are pointing to the root node. So here's the root node. Any interior node is actually pointing up. With our trees, we always see it pointing down. We're going to see why this is the case. But each of these subsets making up the total set are represented by these trees. We're going to see exactly why we do this. Um, but this is a subset. This is a subset. This is a subset. We have a tree. We have a tree. We have a tree. And then there's certain operations we can do. This is what the data structure is. And so before we actually look at the operations, let's have our feet solid in the ground on our definitions for trees. So if you want to review on trees, you can see our tree fundamentals video. So what are trees, right? Trees are a very specific kind of graph. And so in the most general case, a tree is going to be, it, it's undirected. This is by definition, it's undirected between any two nodes. So say for any of these two nodes, one, six, two, five, there's going to be at most one path between the two nodes. So there's no cycles. If I introduce an edge here, a path from the two to the three would just be to, you know, traverse this edge. Or, you know, if this edge existed, I could go there. So that's two paths. At most, one path is all we're allowed to have. So a tree is very, it has a very specific look. Uh, this is a formal definition, but it has a very specific look. It's a specific kind of graph that's acyclic. What we see most often when we're dealing with trees is we see rooted trees. We have directed trees. And the most common type you see is an out tree. This is a tree where we have a root node, and then we're going to point to other nodes, right? We're going to point outwards. Uh, this is the root, and then we're going outwards. And then in this case, for what we we're dealing with. We're going to be dealing with an in tree. So it's the same kind of structure. If we imagine these are undirected edges, it would be a tree, right? Except the edges are coming towards the root. So this is the root node and all of these edges are coming towards it. So if we look at the backing structure, we can see that everyone's pointing towards the root. And again, there's a very specific reason we do this, which we're going to look at. So this is the background on trees. We're going to be dealing with in trees. And also, we need to go over the definition of a forest. What is a forest? So a forest, as you can imagine, is a collection of trees where we can have a single node, we can have a, a single tree, or we can have three trees going on. Essentially, a forest is an acyclic graph. And remember, a graph can consist of multiple disjoint segments. This is a graph, right? And then this is a subgraph. Or, you know, this itself is a graph. A, a subgraph is a graph in itself. This is a forest. Each connected component, each of these are connected components, are trees. These are trees, right? And then this whole graph, this whole graph is a disjoint union of these trees, right? So, you know, rem remember a graph is a mathematical object. We have a set of vertices. We have a set of edges, right? So this is just something to keep in mind. So a forest, just remember it's a collection of trees, but it can be a single node. Um, and then, you know, we have our definition of trees. So now that our feet are rooted within the fundamentals of the structures we're working with, let's think about the problem we're trying to solve. If you're enjoying this video, we have plenty more awesome data structure algorithm and system design explanations on interviewpen.com. You can ask us any questions you have about any kind of topics surrounding data structures and algorithms and system design. We release two to four videos a week. You can run your code. You can talk to a personalized AI teaching assistant. And yeah, the site's pretty great. Anyway, enjoy the video. And I, I really want to frame this lesson that way. I don't want to just jump into how the structure works. I want you to think about the problem we're trying to solve here. So the question we're trying to solve is, how do we do subset operations quickly? How do we check if you give me an element X, element Y, are these items in the same set? Remember, a graph is a set of vertices. Here's the vertices and then it's a set of edges here's the edges and so if you have a set of vertices if i'm able to check whether a or d are in the same subset the same subgraph these are the kinds of problems that'll pop up in computer science where we can use a certain structure that gives us fast subset checking and so where does this pop up one specific case we're going to look at is minimum spanning trees so remember a minimum spanning tree is you give me a set of nodes so the set a b c d e 
right? This is the set V. This is the set of nodes. The idea is we want to connect all of these nodes with edges. We want all of the nodes to be connected together into a connected component, and we want there to be no cycles, and we want minimal cost, min cost. So the idea is we want to use the cheapest edges so that we can connect all of the nodes. So imagine building a road network. Let's imagine you're building a neighborhood and we need to connect all of these houses together. Uh, how would we do that with minimal cost if it costs us money to build any one of these given roads? And so we've covered Kruskal's algorithm in our minimum spanning tree video, but the idea is we have these nodes. Okay, perfect. We have these edges. These edges will be in a set or they'll just be an unordered structure. We're going to sort the edges. So then we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the edge is actually going to be a node uh, U and then a node V. We're going to sort these edges and then I'm gonna pick the first edge. So if this is the array, we're gonna have an array of UVs. So we'd have A, C, we'd have D, E, right? This is a cost of one, cost of two. We have these sorted, right, and so on. And then we're gonna choose the cheapest edge. We're gonna to try to connect them. And here's the key thing. When I connect these, I want to make sure I don't create a cycle. So we sort the edges, pick the cheapest edge, continue while the minimum spanning tree is not complete. So what does that look like? We're, we're just gonna go through a quick walkthrough here. We have all of the nodes not connected. We have the edges sorted in terms of their cost. We take the cheapest edge, but first we do a subset operation. We say, are A and C in the same subgraph? No, they're not because we haven't connected any edges. So then we're going to connect A and C and now we have a subgraph going on. We have this AC subgraph. And then we're going to say, what's the next cheapest edge? It's gonna be the two, right? So then we're gonna say, are D and E within the same subgraph? Well, no, they're not. They're not even connected together. So D and E, perfect, we're gonna choose that edge. And then we're going to say, what's the next cheapest edge? The next lowest number is three. We're gonna say A and B. Are A and B already connected within a subgraph? No, uh, this actually extends this subgraph. And so we connect these guys and then we continue on. So what's the next cheapest edge? It's gonna be four. But this is where this disjoint set structure is going to help us. If we see B and C, we can see that we've already got a subgraph connecting them. So if I write this edge, the next lowest edge, I'm going to create a cycle. We don't wanna do that. Our minimum spanning tree just needs to connect the nodes with minimal cost. A cycle is not going to benefit us. We already have that component connected. And so we're going to quickly be able to know in a very low time complexity that these guys are in the same set. And so this is exactly what we're trying to solve quickly, right? This is what the disjoint set's gonna help us with. And then anyway, we continue on, we can't do the four, so the next lowest guy is five, and we see the B and D are in different subsets. Here's one subset, here's the second subset. B and D are in different ones, so we make that connection. We make the connection, and then this is the fully connected component with minimal edge cost, and that is that's that is the problem we're trying to solve here. And so, what are the operations? So we're going to step through this, just, just follow along with me, but we're going to see what are the operations with this disjoint joint set structure. And remember, this is what the structure looks like. It's just a set. And then each of the subsets are tr inverted trees. Um, and we're going to see why is it structured like this. And so we have three critical operations. Well, the two most important ones are these. Um, we're going to be able to create a new set with a single item, a new node X. We want to see a representative of a subset, which is going to be the root. So if I have this, so if this is the subset, this is the subset one, two, three, the representative node is the root node. And we're going to go over all of these terms. And then we also want to union and merge subsets. If I have these two subset trees, how do I merge them together into a single subset? And we're going to look at that. So there's merging subsets, there's finding a, a subset's representative node, which we're gonna look at, and then there's creating a new set. So first I want to make a note on representation. So remember we have our overarching set, imagine these as nodes in a graph, and then imagine these as subgraphs, you know, these are these are subsets that we're going to be building. I wanna make a note on how we're going to represent this in memory so we can actually look at code as we go. So so the goal is we want to represent these tree structures. Each of these trees is a subset. The root node is going to point to itself. Uh, every other node is going to point up to the root. So this is the opposite of what we've dealt with with trees so far. And what's the goal? We want to create an in-memory representation of mapping a child to a parent. So these are the data points we want to model. We need to model the edges. We need to model the node values. What's the best way to do this? Well, it was with, a, with a hashing structure, so with a hash uh, table, we want to map the node value to its parent. And so how do we do that? Well, there's two ways we could do that. Uh, we have objects, you know, in your language, you probably have some sort of dictionary. You probably have some sort of dictionary where you can map the node value of zero points to its parent of one. The node value of one uh, points to itself. 
it points to one itself. Uh, the node value of two points to itself too. Uh, the node value of three points to itself. Uh, the node value of four points to two. Node value of seven points to two and so on. So you can use a dictionary or you can use an, uh, an array. Um, if you know all of the integer quantities you're dealing with zero to seven, the index is the node ID, right? So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I say, you know, who is pointing to node two? Well, four is pointing to node two, four is pointing to node two, seven is pointing to node two, and then two is pointing to node two itself. So we index by the node ID to see the parent it is pointing at, right? So both of these are doing the same thing. This is a dynamic dictionary object that can expand. This is a static array. We can do it either way. Here's the core problem we're trying to solve. And so now that I've made a node on representation, we can look at how we would actually implement our structure or our core operations. So the the first operation is how do I create a new set? Well, we're going to be able to add a single item. And so I created this, you know, little class here. We're working in JavaScript, but you know, this is language independent. The concept is very simple to implement for all of these functions. So when we create a new set, it's with a single item. And all we're going to do is we're going to initialize this dictionary uh, to the parent. So this is a member variable of this class. Uh, and then in the make set operation, a client would you know call this and say, make a set with the integer value X. We could use objects here, whatever. And then the parent of X. So we're going to index into the parent uh, dictionary. We're gonna say, okay, at this key X, uh, the parent is going to be itself. So let's imagine we passed in make set eight we're going to create a new node and it's going to point to itself. This is how we create a new subset. Um, and so it adds a set uh, and later we can do a union. We're going to look at how to merge these sets. So you could have a bunch of these little single guys and then you can merge them into a single subset, which we'll look at. And it's going to point to itself, as I said before. So this is the first operation uh, creating a new set. Now, what does it mean to find a set's representative? So, you know, we have these little trees going on. The root node has a special term. It's called a represent representative. It's a representative node, right? And the representative can be any node. You know, there's nothing special about this root other than it, it's going to tell us uh, to, it's going to tell us whether X and Y are in the same subset. So here's a question I have for you. How do I know if zero or six are in the same subset? Well, I can climb up the tree and this is the biggest, biggest thing. This is the whole, this is the whole bread and butter of the structure. If I want to see if X is zero, Y is six, are they in the same subset? Well, I can climb up the tree. If both of their parents are the same node, that means they must be in the tree. So this explains everything. Why are we pointing to the root? Why is there this node that's special called the representative? For these operations, if I wanna see if X and Y are in the same subset, I can climb up the tree. And then I wanna take a step back and say, why are we even using trees, right? A tree is kind of this weird nonlinear structure. And traditionally, in a binary tree, this gives us logarithmic time access to stuff, log n. So why are we using a tree? We can skip elements, right? This logarithmic access keeps us from having to do a linear scan over all of the elements. And that's exactly what we want. For these subset operations, I don't want to have to linearly check all the items within wherever you know x is, wherever y is. The tree lets us skip items. And so that's a fundamentals of what we're really trying to do, right? So anyway, we want to find the root node in the subset, which is the representative node. How do we do that? If I say, what is the representative node of zero, uh, you know, wherever zero is located, all I have to do is climb up the tree. And so this is simple, uh, simple tree climbing. We can do this recursive. We can do this iterative. And so if I say, what's the represent representative node of zero, right? I'm going to say, if, if the parent of this node is itself, that means it's the root. That means it points back to itself. So I'm just going to return X. I'm going to just say, this is the representative node. Otherwise, I'm going to say, find the representative node of the parent of this node. So, you know, zero's parent is one. So, you know, this would be zero. And then this whole thing would evaluate to one. And so I'd say, find the representative of one. And then one's going to loop back at itself. And then it's going to say, okay, this dot parent equals, uh, you know, the parent of one is one. So this would be one, would be equivalent to one. So we're just going to return one. So the representative of the zero is one. And so what's the key thing? If the representative is equivalent between two nodes, they're in the same subset. And this is exactly what we're optimizing for, these fast subset checks, fast subset operations. And so this is why we have these weird tree structures. It's so that we can find the representative node, check whether two items are in the same subset, and so on. So this is finding a set representative, the second major operation, the second major operation, and it allows us for fast subset checks. We just climb up the tree. 
And then I'd also like to bring into kind of our minds, what's the worst case for this? Well, if we have a super flat tree, this could be as, you know, as bad as a linear time, right? Or if we have a balanced tree, this could be logarithmic time. Or if we have a perfectly flat tree, right? If we have a flat tree like this, I imagine we can get up to constant time, nearly constant time, you know, just a single constant of a hop mathematically, right? So it can be as bad as we can make it. And we're going to see that we can actually make it very good. And then there's the final operation, finding the union between two subsets. So you're going to give me an X, you're going to give me a Y. So we have these two subsets. We have an X, we have a Y. You're going to give me that X and Y. And then I'm going to merge the subset with X with the subset with Y. So this is the subset with X. This is the subset with Y. How am I going to merge these two subset trees within this disjoint union st structure, which again is backed by a dictionary? Well, first off, I want to say if they're already in the same subset, meaning they have the same representative node, the same root node, we don't have to do anything. So we, you know, we wouldn't have to do anything. But if it's the case where they're not in the same subset, then we're going to take one of these representative nodes. First, we're going to say whose X is representative. It's zero. Whose Y is representative? Four. And then the idea is we want to take either of these root nodes and then set this guy to this root node or this guy to this root node. So this is just an arbitrary way to stitch these trees together. And so in this case, I'm going to take the subset containing X. I'm going to take its representative node and then it's going to become a child of this four. We also could have the case where this four, you know, this four could become a child of this zero, right? This four can become a child of that zero there. Either case works here, right? And this is really weird. Like it's hard to wrap your head around why we're doing this, but the idea is we're just stitching the subsets together. And the only thing, these, the interior node structure doesn't matter. The idea is we want to keep this tree as short as possible so we can find the representatives of a certain node very quickly. And so stitching this tree together in this kind of Frankenstein way, it's kind of weird. It's totally fine to do this. And so we take the root node, point it to this root node, or we take this root node and point it to that root node. And the only thing we have to do within our backing structure is we only need to say, okay, the parent of the representative node of Y is equivalent to uh, this value, the representative node of X, which is that zero. Or we could say the representative X, Y, uh, yeah, so our backing structure lets us do this in constant time uh, to do this rewiring. And remember, the represent representative nodes used to point to themselves. And so now this is saying, okay, I don't point to myself, I point over here. So, okay, we've looked at the core operations. This is all you need to know in terms of the core, how this structure works. But we can optimize things, right? If you made it this far, thank you for watching. So that was the first half of the video. On our website, interviewpen.com, we go through the rest of the video. We optimize our operations as well as looking at the overarching time complexity of the structure itself. If you want more videos on data structures and algorithms and system design topics, go to interviewpen.com. We have a lot of fantastic explanations and we release two to four a week. Essentially, I lead data structures and algorithms and we also create system design content going over system design problems end to end as you can see on this channel already. This is a super competitive industry. So for us to continue to to be economically uh, you know viable or feasible uh, we kind of have to charge for uh, education I would love to just publish everything for free um, but then I wouldn't be able to like survive uh, so uh, we, we have to charge for something uh, so yeah you can go to interviewpen.com we publish every week new explanations um, and you can ask any questions you'd like subscribe to this channel subscribe to our newsletter and tell someone you know that we exist so thanks for watching and that's all